People think they need a nose job because their nose is too big, but this is usually false. And it's not just noses, it's also lips and having lip filler. The cause of both these issues is the same thing, recessed jaws. People want nose jobs and lip filler because their jaws did not grow forwards enough, because they didn't follow the beauty quadrant between birth and adulthood, which promotes forwards jaw growth instead of downwards jaw growth. Most people believe the recessed jaw epidemic is genetic. It's not. Quote, despite claims that the cause of this jaw epidemic is somehow genetic, the speed with which human jaws have changed, especially in the last few centuries, is much too fast to be evolutionary. So why do noses grow wrong? Noses are supported by the anterior nasal spine. It's here on the skull. When the upper jaw bone, the maxilla, is recessed, it's further back. So noses appear crooked because they have no underbone nose support. When the jaw grows forwards, the anterior nasal spine is forwards and high. Pretty noses can actually project forwards more than hooked noses, and yet still appear smaller. When the whole lower face is more forwards, the nose always appears smaller. When the jaws didn't grow forwards enough, but instead grow down and backwards, noses appear bigger and can become crooked. The more the maxilla grows forwards, the less nose is on display. Now let's do lips. Quick experiment. See all your lips, make your upper teeth touch your lower teeth, then blow air between your front teeth and your lips like this. Oh look, your lips appear fuller because more of your lips are showing outside your mouth instead of inside your mouth. Now imagine that your jaws grew more forwards, so you relied on your teeth and not this air to maintain bigger lips. We know that this is accurate when we look at people with no teeth. They have no lips. When the upper jaw bone, the maxilla, and the lower jaw bone, the mandible, grow forwards, the teeth are more forwards, which projects the lips so they look bigger. Here's a guy who had double jaw surgery before his operation, and here he is, afterwards. No lip filler, no nose job, just jaws that have been moved more forwards. The maxilla is the dominant facial bone. When it grows forwards, the cheekbones are pushed up and outwards. Eyes then look like this instead of like this. The nose appears smaller and the lips appear bigger. In the upper palate, there are maxillary sutures. These are the places where the maxilla bone grows when the correct forces are applied. This growth requires direct forces of mouth posture, how to eat, and swallowing. Mouth posture should be constantly applied when you're not eating or speaking. See page 11 of my book, Beauty Potential, How Facial Beauty is Retained or Lost, if you want to know more. How to eat and having strong facial muscles limits downward growth of the maxilla. Downward growth is bad, looks like this. Forwards growth is good, looks like this. See page 21 for more. Swallowing. A long, hard duration swallow also causes these cranial sutures to be pulled apart, promoting more forwards growth of the maxilla. See page 30 for more. And body posture has been shown to impact facial growth too. Hold your head like this, not like this. See page 34 for more. The lower jaw follows the forward growth of the upper jaw when, and only when, you adopt proper mouth posture. When you don't, the lower jaw will become recessed, making this need for nose jobs and lip fillers far more likely. When you adopt those positive pressures found in the beauty quadrant, you won't need nose jobs or lip filler because your face will grow as nature intended. If you think it's genetic, it's not. Here's the science on open mouth posture ruining facial development. Here's the science on how eating wrongly ruins facial development. Here's the science on atypical swallowing ruining facial development. And here's the science on poor body posture ruining facial development. Let's add a second layer of complexity to the nose and the lips. People who are chronically inflamed from birth to puberty get reduced sex hormones at puberty. The body thinks it's not doing a good enough job at filtering, warming, and humidifying the air that you breathe. The body guesses that that filthy inflammatory air is why it's inflamed, even if you're actually mouth breathing and offering no tongue support to hold the maxilla up. And you're not even using the nose to condition the air that you breathe. At that juncture, the body decides that it needs a bigger, wider filtering system to effectively filter air. That system is your nose. Science tells us that estrogen makes noses smaller and thinner. Did you also know that in people who are chronically inflamed with asthma, puberty is actually delayed by 1.3 years on average? Yeah, the body tries to delay puberty for as long as possible in the hope that you find a less inflammatory environment so it can commit to releasing more sex hormones at a later stage. But when we don't follow this health quadrant, we're generally doomed. So the body is forced to release less sex hormones at puberty. That's why people who want nose jobs want them thinner 
as well as smaller. It signifies high estrogen and estrogen slims noses. When slim, small noses occur naturally, that's the body saying, I'm never inflamed, so I can afford to slim my nose and make myself as pretty as possible. High estrogen in girls also makes your lips plumper. So you get a double whammy of plumper lips and more lips showing because the jaws have grown forwards. And you get a smaller, thinner nose, both due to hormones and the naturally expected forward growth of your maxilla. If this interests you, read my book, Beauty Potential, How Facial Beauty is Retained or Lost. It's available now on Amazon.